this is a recording because I haven't had time to prepare the script like I would like to, to stay on point with the point in hand to get my thoughts down clearly because I've just not had time and plus I've been in a lot of pain. Double dropping the painkillers because I've done something to my knee. I don't know what I've done. Ligament damage, who knows? But it hurts. I'm back to the hospital on Sunday, so we'll see. Um, what is this video about? This video is about why men don't get, or people don't get contact the way they want in family court. And I think I've figured it out. And it's very easy to say, and it's very easy to do, but it's not very easy to do. So no, it's not very easy to do. Think about it. You're at war with your ex. He or she has lied about you and has got your children. I'm talking to the men here, majority, and sometimes women too. You go to court as a litigant in person. You're going to go into court and you're going to be fighting. You're fighting with emotion and you're fighting with hate and you're fighting with negative emotions that, like I say, family court brings the worst out of you, brings the worst out of people. What's child focused in this environment? When you want to teach your children, you want to teach your children to love, you want to teach your children to be happy. You want to teach your children to be all the positive things in the world. You wouldn't teach them to go out and be a bully or you wouldn't intentionally teach them to go out and be abusive to a woman if it was a boy or a girl. You wouldn't teach them to go out and be abusive to their boyfriends by psychologically and emotionally abusing them, by controlling them. You wouldn't want to teach your children that naturally, but that's what you're doing when you're at conflict. You're not being child focused because you're at war. Anything negative you say about your ex-partner, whether it be your ex-wife or ex-husband, you say it in denigrating them to the children, that means you are not being child focused. So when you go into court and you are denigrating the other parent, criticizing the other parent, condemning the other parent, letting all your natural emotions out, you're just not being child focused. So what you have to do is you have to show respect, show love, have integrity. And you're like, well, how can I show love to someone who's just tried, wants me dead, wants me to cut out of my family's life? has taken away the one thing or the two thing or the three children that your purpose, basically. How are you supposed to go and show that person respect when they don't even show you respect? Not very easily. When family court encourages you to fight and argue, it doesn't, but the environment does. And you've got solicitors on both sides. And that doesn't matter which side. Solicitors stir in the pot. Family lawyers are the most dangerous, smelly, snaky people that you'll ever meet. So if you find yourself in a tricky situation in family court, as difficult as it is, you have to show love. You have to be humble. You have to give them the power. The post-doctrine years, is that what it's called? Is that what it is? Let me check. Tender years doctrine. That's what it is. Tender Years Doctrine, right? So the Tender Years Doctrine is a legal principle in family law that has been in place since the late 19th century. It assumes that mothers are best able to care for the children during their tender years, which are generally considered to be up to the age of four and therefore should have custody of them naturally. This doctrine often arises in divorce proceedings. No shit, Sherlock. However, the Tender Years Doctrine has been criticised for discriminating against and violating the rights of fathers and other caregivers. Today is the best interest, today the best interest of the children, child standard is used to determine custody arrangements. But if it was, and I'm coming across more and more and more, and I've got recordings to back it up, CAFCAS officers know that the children are being abused emotionally and psychologically but they don't know what to do about it. They just don't know what to do. 
And then you'll get the report that says the child should live with the mum, even though you know that you've had the conversation with this cap cast officer saying that she's aware, more than aware that the child's been manipulated to have the thoughts that it has. But what can it do? And this is the challenge. And this is the challenge. What can we do? Do we take the child away from the mother who's normalized this, the child's normalized this behavior? Is that going to bring the child, is that going to make the child love you more and want to spend more time with you? Or is it going to make the child want to resent you? You've taken away its mum. Because that's not going to work, is it? That doesn't work. So the solution is you have to take what you've got and you've got to give it the best go that you can. And you've got to reach acceptance quickly because you will have contact or you may not have contact or you won't even try to have contact. You won't even try to send the email in direct contact, whatever it is you've been given that you don't like. Whenever you should, whenever you've got contact with the opportunity, you're not going to be happy enough to, to better take it on. And the children are going to get the worst side of you. So you have to reach acceptance quickly. And that's not easy. But especially when the person who's put you in this space isn't showing you that same respect back. It would be dancing on your grave if you were to be six foot under. But you've got a responsibility of trying to maintain the relationship with your child or children. Whilst not being the person that they've heard you to be. And as long as you're in their lives a little bit is better than none. As long as you're in their lives a little bit, you can influence that. That is in your control. Look out for more solutions about this because this is the only way forward. You can fight, but you're not going to win anything from fighting. Loving, accepting, growing, using it as a positive. These are all things that you have to work on. Till next time. Buongiorno.